Bonjour people and welcome to another Transformers video review. I just thought I'd throw one of these out here randomly. This time we are looking at the Revenge of the Fallen Nest Global Alliance Bumblebee. Uh, yeah, so 2009-2010 the Revenge of the Fallen line decided to expand out uh, from its main line and you had before the hunt of the Decepticons Nest Global Alliance. And a lot of the figures, I'll see if I can just focus in on this. I'm going the wrong way, but a lot of figures and had, you can see the Autobot symbol on there. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a gimmick. Hasbro trying new things here and there to keep the toy lines refreshing. But this is the Bumblebee we got. And um, the funny thing about this figure is if you look at the paint deco on here, the thickness of the black stripes, this is basically how he looked in Dark of the Moon. It's as if they were predicting his look at least one year, two years early. But uh, this is still the, in essence, the original Bumblebee mould from the 2007 film, not counting the old beat-up Chevy Camaro that he was beforehand and that he will be again in... Uh, the next Transformers film, Rise of the Beasts. Um, but yeah, it's using the original mould from the uh, Superior Deluxe, but it's still the Revenge of the Fallen remould, and you can tell that by the head sculpt and the cannon arm, but we'll get to those later. But uh, colour-wise, he is a nice goldish yellow. Uh, instead of just like a plain, really light yellow, this suits him really nicely. It's nice and metallic. At least that's how it comes across. It's not actual metallic paint by any means, but uh, yeah. Uh, black stripes, big and thick, like the Dark of the Moon variation, going across the bonnet, across the roof, and across the sides with the, uh, the Nest logo that I can't really focus on there. Blue transparent windows, or transparent, however you want to say it, along the back, the sides, and the front. And uh, you can open his doors, that is part of the transformation, but uh, if you do so please, you can display him with his doors open. Not that you would ever want to, unless you want to have a, like, a little minifigure pretending to go in and out of it. Uh, you can see the missile storage underneath there, it kind of looks like an exhaust fume. That's kind of a nice little detail there, I suppose. Uh, the Chevy logo is painted red on the front. There is quite a nice detail along the bumper section there and the grille. Uh, hubcaps are nice, but yeah. Overall, uh, really nice looking vehicle mode. In terms of Bumblebee moulds, people usually rate the Battle Blades one to be the best. Um, I'm, a, I'm still honestly of the opinion that this mould is the best and I remember I specifically got this bumblebee because I genuinely thought it was the best bumblebee out there because I'm notoriously very picky about my figures and I studied all of the different bees out at the time I didn't get this in 2009 I got this oh I want to say 2012 13 somewhere like that so I, I got this guy really after the fact um and it was a toss-up between this version and the Dark of the Moon Deluxe for me as to which one was the best. I think, like, the Studio Series has some good ones out there. But uh, I always like the profile of this one better compared to the Battle Blades because I've got a really massive problem with the way that the chest is orientated for that guy. Whilst I think this guy, the way it collapses up, is a lot better. Um, right, we'll get on to the transformation. First of all, you want to open those doors up. And then you really want to tug on these parts on either side and get them to flare out a little bit. It is a bit stiff because I don't play with the figures a lot. They are display pieces for me. But you want to tug them out and then you want to rotate them around to the front and this will provide clearance later on. And get that out of the way there. Now you want to go through the process really of splitting him apart down the middle. Trying to move all of that out the way. I'm going to take the roofs, which are attached to the arms, spread them all the way out, which will allow you to fold 
bring the screen back. We're going to work on the legs now. We're going to move these pieces up. Like so. Then we're going to come to the feet and activate the Automorph gimmick. And I love the Automorph. Just in general, Automorph is a great feature, which I think they should bring back. But moving the feet down moves this bit up and it collapses the back window onto the inside. And then you want to straighten up the heel like so. So there we go, as you can see. That's a feature that they stuck with for a very long time with Bumblebee figures. It was the one consistent. Whilst well, they, they retooled how you do the roof and other parts of the transformation along with the doors, they always kept the legs until very recently. Right, let's see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm going to split that slightly. Uh, I may not have his arms tugged out a lot. It is pretty stiff. Uh, so I'm trying to bring the chest down and coax them back at the same time. And I'm doing something wrong here. Something does not have enough clearance and it might be the head. Uh, there we go. So I'm using the that little chest flap there to lift the chin up to poke the head through the gap and that allows enough clearance for the bonnet to come down and for these to come back. So I'm just going to flare them out a little bit. We'll work on the chest last. Let's go to the arms now. You can see he has just this one big cannon arm. You want to rotate that in so that the end of a missile goes into this trench in his arm. And you want to be spinning that plate back. And it wants to... Ooh, I've just... Okay. <laughs> I think that should just clip in, hopefully. Hopefully, he says. How did I do? There we go. That was worrying. So, same thing on the other side. I want to straighten out his arm. You want to just rotate that background. And then, regarding the chest, the reason why I like this figure more than any others is I think you can get a better chest pose with him. Straighten up my head a little bit. You can see me in the mirror there. Hello. I mean, it's just a matter of trying to get everything at decent angles. And there you go. There is Revenge Befallen Nest Global Alliance Bumblebee in his robot mode. And I dig him. I dig him a lot. He's got beautiful paint everywhere. This rich gold coupled with the black along the arms, along the, the mid, the bottom torso, the highs of the legs, the lows of the legs. It's just a really, really nice looking figure. Now, he does sport the Revenge of the Fallen head. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to focus in on this. I think that's as clear as we're going to get here. But he has the Revenge of the Fallen, the Revenge of the Fallen head uh, with the, 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 uh, the possessed eyes. He stares into your soul like Birdie does in my Firewatch playthrough. If you've not seen my Firewatch playthrough, check it out. It's pretty fun. Seven parts long. Thriller, mystery, go watch it, it's good. But anyway, he has the, uh, the creepy head sculpt, which is superior to the, the first movie's head sculpt. I don't really have a first movie figure. I've got the, the OG Camaro Bumblebee, you know, the beat up one, but I'm not going to fish him out here. Not for this guy. Uh, what else does he have? He has the cannon hand, which was a staple for the Revenge of the Fallen figure. The, it's, this is where I, I kind of prefer the first movies a little bit, because he came with this cannon that he could split apart into a knife 
I do prefer that. However, this cannon here is sculpted really nicely. And you can fire the missile. There is a black button just where my thumb is. And that's got a bit of oomph to it. And that fires pretty well. And then you just want to plug that in and you can see it goes through the trench. Another thing to notice about this figure, this mould was notorious for these shoulder pieces popping off. However, this specific version rectified it because they put pins in and thus that stopped it. And that was another reason why I wanted this guy specifically because I did all the research for it. I looked at the best paint job. I looked at the best just everything and I made sure that I got the one with the pins so that shit wouldn't happen. In terms of articulation, B has a full, frixty, full 360 ball jointed head which can look down that far and move up that far. You can mess about with these if you like but they want to be there, the wings, whatever. Uh, full 360, oh he says, I assumed it was sort of a 360 at the shoulder, although it is at an angle because of the wheel behind there. Uh, he has a rotation at the bicep there. He can bend at the elbow. And I've just ripped off his cannon again. I keep doing that and I don't know why I keep doing that. Bear with. So you can do that on both arms. His left hand can turn a full 360. For why you would want to, I don't particularly know. Uh, he has an ab crunch. It is a ball joint, so he can move that up and down. In terms of a leg, he can go up that far, back that far. He has that much of a knee. Then he has toe pivot. He has heel pivot, but that's for transformation really. And then you can move his foot on all sorts of angles there. And that is Bumblebee's articulation. And really, that's it for the figure. I still think that he is one of the better Bumblebees out there. You know, he's old, but he's got it where it counts. And I don't have any really any other Bumblebees to compare him to. Like I said, I do have the old beat-up Camaro. But uh, I'm not going to fish that guy out because he's not in really a fit state to be presentable. And I can't be bothered, honestly, to bring out any of the transform Transformers for size comparisons. But uh, standard deluxe size, good value, I think. Um, I recommend seeking this guy out, personally. If you want a Bumblebee on your shelf, I don't like the Battle Blades. I am in the minority there, I know, but... Hey, I think this guy is certainly the best. And like, I'll probably say that the Dark of the Moon one is the second best. You know, you know the mainline Bumblebee, not the, the Nitro one. That weird, that really weird version. I would quite like to have a dabble with the Age of Extinction um, old Camaro one from that as well, the Black Bumblebee. Because I think that's quite an interesting mould as well. And then the last night one also is pretty good. And that's kind of the, the mould that they developed and used in the studio series. But I think that this guy laid the paving stones for what the basic Bumblebee should be. Um, well, I say this guy. It really like the OG 07 one. But still, this is the ultimate version of that. I highly recommend this Bumblebee to collectors. And uh, that'll do it for this review. So like and subscribe if you haven't already and share this video around because it helps out the channel quite a lot. Thank you everybody for stopping by and checking out this review. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for figures that I may already own, drop them in the comments and I will think about doing a review on those as well. But uh, until the next time, I'll see you all later. <laughs>